Hey, what's good family? In this video, I am going to show you everything you need to know when it comes to setting up TradingView, all the tools you need to use, how to set up your charts. And if you find that you already know how to do something or already understand something, feel free to scrub through the bottom and look through the channel chapters. Now, without further ado, let's hop into the charts. All right, so here I am. I am on TradingView.com. This is what it's going to look like if you don't have an account. If you don't have an account, Hey, be sure to check the referral link down below in the description. Uh, TradingView is free to use. That's what I'm going to be using in this browser. But if you sign up using my account, whenever you do or if you ever make an account, it's going to give you $15 off the price of TradingView. Now, moving on, in order to really get into the charts, it's going to want you to make an account. But maybe we'll just go through. Uh, we'll search the stock. Uh, here, we'll do... In this instance, we'll do the SPY, and what we're going to do is hit Launch Chart. And this is going to be the first thing you see. Now to start off, uh, the chart looks kind of messy. You know, the red and green is not considered to be good for your psychology. So first thing we're going to do is clean this chart up and fix, uh, make it something that's a little bit better for its psychology. So looking at it, uh, we can actually come through and double click on the candles. And first thing we're gonna do is kind of change the body or change the candles. So, so looking at this, red and green is associated kind of with good and bad. So uh, seeing red on your tray can really mess with you psychologically and seeing green on your tray can sometimes make you think things are going better than usual. So me personally, I use blue and black or I use black instead of red. And then sometimes I'll, I'll just make whatever color I feel like having it. Most of the time it's blue. Uh, but looking here, uh, green, these are gonna be the candles that go up and red's gonna be the ones going down. So I'm gonna take everything on the red side. I'm just gonna make it black. And notice what's happening over here. So, so far, everything I've made black is kind of the border of the body and the actual body. Now the wick, notice those are black. Now going on, looking at these green candles, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna make the borders black on those. And I am going to make the body, here we'll go for, Let's go for like this kind of blue right here, maybe a little lighter. And then I want to make the wicks black as well. All right, so already right there, just from where we started, in my opinion, here, let's move this off to the side so you can see. We have the charts looking better and it's a lot easier to look at. Now going on, uh, some things that I like to do. I'm going to come down to the next section. I just like to go down and go through all this first. I want to clear all this up. So right here where it says logo, I personally like to keep that on. What that is, is this little logo right here. If you take pay attention, that's going to be a preference kind of thing. Title. I like to have the title there just to know what stock it is. Uh, open market status. I think that's these right here, I don't really care. Or I guess it's just this right here. I don't personally care about that, so I prefer that to go off. Uh, when it comes to trading, you wanna keep it as simple as possible. So the more that you can remove, the better, the more you can focus on what you're doing. When it comes to chart values, let me see what those. Okay, so right here, open, high, low, close. Those don't matter to me as much. It may matter to you. Uh, depending on your trading strategy, but that doesn't matter to me, so I'm going to remove that. And then bar change values, that's just how much the bar has changed. I'm gonna remove that. Uh, that's volume, last day. Now, when it comes to indicators, you can see right here we have volume. Um, here, so let me add an indicator just to show you. So let's say we add something like a 
Let's, here, I'm just going to add the RSI for now. Or let's, let's say I add an EMA. Okay, so they want, this is where they want you to add an account. I'm actually not, I'm not going to add an account for this video just because I already have one and I don't want to confuse things, but uh, going on, uh, yeah, they're going to keep trying to advertise to me. Going on, looking at the settings, uh, just know arguments are going to be there whenever you have your indicators here. The values, uh, these are going to be, uh, when you have your indicators, these are going to be if you want to know the exact numbers. Uh, I think I usually have that off. And then background, I think that has to do with the indicators, but I usually have that off. Going on, looking at scales and lines, like visible on mouse over, visible on mouse over, scales, auto. So yeah, I leave all this like this value line. Now going on, looking at the high and low, this if you want the high and low value on there for like what's on the chart. So for instance, if I have those on there, you see it's highlights the high. All right, and then bid and ask, that's just extra information. Going on, looking at the canvas, the background, I like to have it solid. I like to make it a little bit darker. That way it's just not completely white and like blinding my eyes. Uh, I personally like to remove the grid lines just to clean it up a little bit. So change that to none. Notice all that just disappeared. And then when it comes to crosshairs, this doesn't even matter because we just remove that watermark, nothing, nothing on there. And then none of this really matters. Trading. I don't do anything with this in events. If you want to know when there are dividends, splits, earnings, this can be kind of interesting information to have on there. You can uh, leave those down and you'll notice kind of down at the bottom, this D stands for dividend. That's when they had a dividend. Uh, if they had earnings, we're looking at the SPY, so the SPY doesn't have earnings, but if they did, it would be there. So alert lines and only active alerts. Okay. so. That's all for the chart settings. Now, when it comes to setting up things for the way you want to trade, the indicators, uh, making sure things are to your liking. Uh, now we're going to take a look. And I mean, first thing I'm going to do, uh, getting rid of the red and green, this little volume down here, this little indicator, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this and I'm just going to remove it. So notice down there at the bottom, the volume is gone. One more thing I forgot to remove on this is this buy and sell button. So I'm going to come here, double click the candle, go to trading and should be on here somewhere. Buy and sell buttons. I'm going to uncheck this and those are gone. The only reason you would want to use those buy and sell buttons is if you actually have your account connected to this and you are actually trying to trade with it and buy shares going on looking at this now i'm going to show you how to set up the time frames you're going to use so if as you can see right here you can click on this kind of time frames and you can come here and pick your time frame but actually if you come here and this is this is why you want to at least create an account because they're going to keep trying to get you to join i'm going to have to refresh this again All right, so once again, let me remove the volume. All right, but going back to where we were, looking at the time frames, you can't get seconds unless you're paying for it, but looking down to the minute, or looking at the time frames, if you want to add a time frame to your favorite so you don't have to click on this drop down menu and access it faster, you just come over here and star it. So I like the one, two, three, five, ten. 15, 30, then I'll go one hour, four hour, one day, one week, one month, 
And this is how I like my time frame. So this is how I normally look at the charts on here. All right, so we have this set up. Now there are more favorites that you want to set up. When it comes to trading or charting or whatnot, you're going to want to have quick access to your tools so you don't have to go dig through and find them. For instance, right here you have a trend line tool, but you may also want access to another one of these lines. So the way that you can personalize this, uh, the same way, if you start, it's gonna go to your favorite. So we have the trend line tool, which you can drag this wherever you want, this little favorites thing. Put mine right here. If I wanna draw a trend line, this is what you would use if you want to connect two points and you want it to happen at a slant. And, and I just want to show you that you can alter these similarly to the candles. So for instance, if I double click the line, I can change the style. I can change the text, coordinates, visibility. Uh, let me, and then up here, I can change the color, I can make it gray. I can make it black, whatever I want. If I want it to be thinner, I usually like them thinner. And then if I want to, set an alert, I can click add alert or I can delete it. All right, so you can do that for pretty much all these tools. So just remember that. Now going on adding the other tools, we'll talk about each tool as we add them. Next one right here is gonna be horizontal line. So this is gonna be, oh wait, I didn't actually add it. So I'm gonna add horizontal line. So next is gonna be horizontal line, just draws a line directly across this chart horizontally. Once again, if you want, you can thin that out. You can darken it. But yeah, that just goes all the way across the chart, no matter what time frame. All right, going on, looking at the next tool. So we got trend line, horizontal line. Next is a horizontal ray, which is a little bit different. It's similar to horizontal line, but it's gonna go from the point that you draw. So a horizontal ray, if I do it from right here, it's going to, you know, you're going to have this line going right here from where you draw, or if I wanted to do it from over here or from right here. So this, I kind of use this for drawing support and resistance and where it's coming from. All right, going on, what do we have next? Uh, vertical line, cross line, channels. Uh, so I don't personally use any of these, so I'm gonna leave those alone. Uh, next we have the Fibonacci retracement tool. So when it comes on how to use this, that's another video for another day, but say I was looking at this tool right here I drew it from here to here. These are essentially areas that you would expect it to pull back to. Uh, going on to how I have it set up, I'm going to double click once again, style, um, right here on style. I personally like the trend line is gonna be kind of this little dotted line right here. See, I can make it dotted. Levels line is going to be are going to be these lines right here. I'm going to thin those out just because I like them a little thinner. And then when it comes to the levels, I like to get rid of all the excess. So here, got to refresh it again. Uh, once again, going back to the Fibonacci retracement tool, double click and get rid of pretty much everything except for zero. Uh, 0.618, get rid of that. So yeah, we'll just leave these. So this is what we'll look at. And then going from here, going to make a couple more adjustments. So I'm going to make this clear, make that clear. And then I'm going to have these be the same color. Just so it's a little more coherent. Oh, hold on, it's still something. 
I personally can do without the trend line as well. Yeah, actually, I think I actually have this unchecked and this unchecked as well. So yeah, this is this is how I do mine, like like this. And I might use a darker color just because I can barely see it. All right, so this is how I have mine. Uh, if you're new to this, the trend line may be helpful to you. Make it a little more visible, like it black, like it thin, and then, yeah. That's, that's how you have that. Now, closing that out, next tool, there's probably not gonna be anything else you want from that one, but going on looking at these patterns. So nothing on there. Uh, these are gonna be some important tools. They're gonna be your long position, short position. Uh, taking a look at these, if we look at the long position or short position, here I'm gonna add both of them at the same time. Um, this is your short position tool. This is your long position tool. Essentially, if you are trading long, uh, the green would be the area. This is where you essentially make a trade. So say I thought this was going to go from here to here. Here, let's actually zoom out. Say I thought, say I took this, I entered the trade right here. So this line is going to line up with where I entered. Uh, say I wanted my stop loss to be right here. And say I thought it was going to come up here, so that was my target. This is how I would use this. And then say I bought up here. And I wanted my stop loss to be somewhere right here. And I was looking to ride it down to here. Um, these are kind of tools you use to project your trades. You can see a uh, risk to reward ratio. So this is an eight to, eight to one, which means I can uh, get stopped out on this trade eight times and get it right once and still be in profit. And this is a 3.83 to one. So that means I can get this, take this trade 3.83 times only get it right once and still be profitable going on with these tools like to adjust them the stop color once again with the psychology like to make this like a black uh, just to make it it's a little bit nicer than seeing the red and then same over here make that black instead and then yeah it's just a little bit easier to deal with and see and notice things and to get rid of them, I'm really just clicking on them and pressing delete. All right, next tool. Every time the little ad pops up where they're asking me to join TradingView, uh, I am having to like refresh and these volume bars keep coming in. So I'm thinking I'm just going to like leave them next time, but just wanna let you know what's going on there. But going on, uh, the next thing you may want is potentially price range. So the way I use this tool is if you want to know like what a potential return is, like say we're up here and there's a gap right here that we want to track. And we say, oh, how much profit can be made with puts to the downside or just shorting to the downside. So from here to here, that's a 3% pullback, and that's a $17 move. Uh, one thing I do is I have this kind of adjusted to make it once again look a little bit cleaner. So with the line, uh, it'll be thin. Uh, background will be a little bit more clear so it doesn't take as much. And then, yeah, we kind of just uh, label background, actually have that completely clear so that's not messing with anything and hit okay yeah that's how things look for me going on i think that's all the tools in this section then over here don't really see you needing too many of these on your own uh, one that we use right here is for rectangles if you're marking supply and demand uh, what what that is is actually a rectangle tool all right so looking at the rectangle tool say we I marked the zone right here. 
saying, oh, this is a good buy zone. This is how I would use this and say, oh, this is a good sell zone. That's how I would use this. Uh, going on to adjust it, uh, once again, I like my borders to be thin. If they're even there, maybe I don't even want a border. I feel like I don't have a border, or maybe I just have the opacity all the way down on my borders. Yeah, that's how I have it. And then, yeah, there's no middle line or anything. I'll have the background more like Sometimes it'll be green. Uh, most of the time it'll be like a slightly color than whatever background I'm using. So it'll look like that. Once again, just to show you one more time how I do it. Come in, make it probably about that. Oh, that's the background. So for the border, that'll be completely clear. The fill will be over here. Or maybe another shade darker. Somewhere in that range. And yeah, that's how I draw the rectangles. Going on looking for more tools. I do use the circle tool, but I don't think that's anything most of you will really need unless you're teaching. Text, uh, this is if you want to like leave a note for yourself or mark something. So you, I clicked on it. You just click where you want to type and then Type high. There you go. So yeah, that's the text. You can, of course, change the font, change the size, all that good stuff, similar to everything else. So I'm going to actually, yeah, just delete that, get rid of that. And then uh, another interesting thing, if you want to actually like kind of mark the prices for your trades. So say, oh, I think this trade will come right here. And then right here or right here. This is the price label tool. You can add that if that's something that interests you. Uh, I like to make these green. Just usually because they lead to more money for me. Uh, actually, I don't really do anything with the border. That might be just nothing to me. But background, usually like to make it like green or something. And that's how I like to have mine. Or maybe I have the border, but I have it black, I wanna say. Yeah, that's, that's how I think I have mine. But yeah, that's the price label tool. One last tool I skipped over, right over here in geometric shapes. It's gonna be the path tool, I'm gonna to add this. This is gonna be more of a projection tool. So with this path tool, the way you use it, say you think it's gonna come down here, fill in this gap, before going up. This is just a tool that you would use to kind of project what you think is gonna happen. Every time I click, it makes a new kind of notch, new point for it to change. And if I want this to stop, I simply just right click and that ends the pattern. So that's how to simplify your charts. Those are gonna be all the tools that you need in TradingView. All right, so I'm jumping back in here and I wanna show you this cause this is something I get asked a lot. Uh, one thing that is important that you want to make sure is done is you want to come here to this setting right here, more settings, and once again, come down to where it says session. You want to make sure you have extended hours. So now you can see all the trading that goes on. And one thing that I will do with this is take these, the opacity here, slide it down, take the opacity here, slide it down. So the chart's still clean. Use that in combination with everything else that we've gone over in this video. Uh, now over here you have watch list. So something that you see that it kind of already has going for you is it kind of has these different separation areas that you can move these different categories and whatnot. But if you want to add something to your watch list, say I want to add Nike, for instance, I could uh, just click on it and then click plus right here. Oh wait, hold up. I could click on Nike or I could uh, click this plus right here, click Nike and then come over to this plus. It says add to watch list. And now we're gonna go over to my trading views so that we can actually see because 
I think we have hit the limit of what we can do with this. All right, so here we are looking at trading view. I want to show you some things. Uh, going back to adding things to your watch list, um, say I wanted to add Nike to this, I would hit that plus over there, come to NKE and hit the plus. And now you can see it's added to my watch list. If I want to change its positioning, just slide it up, slide it down, you know, whatever we want. If I want to delete it, there's a little trash can over here to the right as I hover over it. And yeah, there's uh, going on. Uh, now that we're on my account, now that we're signed in, really quick before we go over some things, I want to address a question that I'm sure that I'll get. Uh, when it comes to my platform, you'll notice this one is kind of like darker, it's black, whereas the other one was kind of more white on the borders. That's simply because I use my computer in dark mode. So that's more of a computer setting. Everything I go on is going to be dark instead of have and have the black or darker borders. Whereas most people who don't have their software on dark mode is going to look white. So if you want to change that, you need to go in your settings and have your computer set to dark mode. Oh, I have the buy sell button on too. Let me remove this buy sell button that's here all right so that looks better but going on uh, you'll notice that I have these indicators over here you can see EMA 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 uh, I have three separate EMAs added if you're using the free version and you want three EMAs you have to use something like this there let me show you uh, right here you can see this one right here is it counts as one indicator I think they only let you use one or two with the free version. I have the ability to use multiple because I pay for it. But if I want to add this EMA, I would click right here on this little star. And now using that little star, I added it to my favorites right here. If I want to add it, I would just click on it. And now you can see I have all those EMAs right here. Now let's say I want to make some adjustments to these. I would just click on settings. So with this one, you're not going to be able to get as specific as I am with mine, uh, just because mine are separate ones. But if you want to get rid of one of these lines, or maybe a couple of them, maybe some of them are too much, uh, you just wanna come see which is which. So looking over here, uh, you can see the 200 is gonna be this one, the one that moves the slowest. Uh, the 20 is going to be the red one, the 50 is going to be the orange one. And so say I just wanted to keep the 200, the 50 and 20, I would get rid of the blue line. I would come to settings and I would just make that not visible. If I wanted to get rid of the 200, get rid of that. Wanted to get rid of this. And then, hey, now it's like I have this EMA to follow. Now I'm going to get rid of that. Let me show you how to adjust if you just pick up a single EMA like mine. So this blue EMA, this EMA is just an EMA tool. So if I wanted to add this as an EMA tool, I, what I would do is I come to M indicators, search EMA, come to moving average exponential, click on that. Now I have a new one. If I want to make adjustments to it, I would just come over here to settings, come over here to settings, uh, change the input. So I use the 13, 48, and 200. So if I wanted to add a 13, I would come over here to 13 and that would adjust. Notice the line just moved. If I want to change it to 200, notice it moved again. So have it on 13. Style is going to be kind of what color you want it to be. I usually have my 13 in blue. That's how it normally looks for me. And then when I was done, I would just hit OK. But since I already have that there, I'm just going to click that off and we're going to be done with that. Um, so I have my indicators right here. I can turn them on and off using this visibility, this little eyeball. And then when I want that to go up, I will push that up. Now I've showed you how to add stuff to your watch list. 
but you can also create new watch lists. So if you click on this drop down arrow, you can come over here, create a new watch list, call this video, hit save, and now we're on the new watch list. So if I wanna add stuff, say I wanted to add Apple, hit AAPL, add, say I wanted to add Tesla, come over here, say I wanted to add Meta, You know, I have a new watch list and as I wanna go through those, I can arrow up and down through those, all right. So that's gonna be everything you need to set up your TradingView account. We went over how to clean up your charts, simplify them, the tools that you actually need to chart your TradingView and even how to adjust them and create your watch list. If you found this video to be helpful or learn anything, be sure to smash the like button. If for some reason you made it this far and haven't already, be sure to subscribe, and if you're interested in getting up to 20 free stocks and haven't already, be sure to sign up for Moomoo using a referral link down below in the description. This offer is only good for a few more days, so be sure to check out the link down below in the description. And last, but certainly not least, thank you so much for watching. Matthew Manuel signing off, and I want to change your life.